All right, so there's two bolts that I missed once again. Very obvious to me now. But just those two, six, no, eight in there, four on top. All right, so with enough finagling, with wedges, I was able to get a good split down the middle and I believe this thing is ready to part now. All right, so in order to get the pistons out as well as the rods, in order to split the two cylinder heads apart, you're going to have to loosen the two bolts on the connecting rods, all four of them. And the best way I found to do this is to use the crankshaft to run it over to this spot. So you're leaning your extension up against this so everything's in line and nothing's at an angle and has a possibility to strip the bolt. I have one stripped already so that should be a challenge to get it out but um, I did get this piston out. Um, you do. All right so I'm taking out this rod and I think I found my culprit for what is knocking. This rod bearing is completely torn to shreds, as you can see there. So that's definitely part of the problem. Um, I'll get these other two out and see if these bearings are also making noise. But, yep, that little bit can make a heck of a lot of noise. Alright, here is our piston that has given us so much problems. As you can see the bearing is completely destroyed, super thin, and that allows for a lot of play in this connecting rod and eventually causes this connecting rod to break and to punch a hole in the engine block. So all I'm doing to get these pistons out, like I said, is take the two bolts out and then I rotate the crankshaft until the cylinder heads uh, pretty much flush right here. And then you just find something to tap the end of the rod with and the cylinder head just comes out the rest of the way. And you can try turning if it doesn't come out. But. That's essentially all it is. And there we go. Alright, so I'm still stuck on getting this last bolt out from the rod. It's completely stripped. Um, I have a bunch of these Irwin bolt extractors. Um, the 10 millimeters too big, the 8's too small, so I think for the time being I'm gonna see if I can um, somehow knock out this wrist pin from the rod and piston connection. There's a C-clip in here that shouldn't be too hard to get out. And same on the other side. And then hopefully I have access to kind of knock that wrist pin out. The old EJ25 engines have access holes to knock out the wrist pins somewhere in here and somewhere over here. Um, at least I haven't found any way to access these other than straight through here somehow with just tiny little access holes so we'll see if I can get a pair of pliers in there and remove the C clamps or yeah C clamps and the wrist pin as well for this last rod. Alright so I'm not sure how much you can see that but it looks like this is not going to work. Um, the 
wrist pin uh, interferes with the cylinder wall and yep there's gonna be no way to hit this wrist pin out so this is the only way to get the rods and pistons out and that sucks because I'm gonna have to cut this head off all right so I burned through some of these bolt extractors the torque was just way too high on that bolt and you know after trying to flatten the surfaces to get a smaller and smaller wrench on there eventually I got down to a quarter inch and it was still slipping off so there's no other option than to cut off the head of that bolt um, probably need a new rod anyway so and I think I did it quick enough to where there is no warping of anything else from the heat so um, it's unfortunate the only thing that I'd have to say about it is my initial reverse torque socket that I had from I think Craftsman which was an E12 was definitely way bigger than the E12 that I purchased afterwards from McMaster car so pretty disappointed in Craftsman for this shitty socket which stripped the head of that bolt but oh well all right so we got the two sides split in half there you can see the two sides and got the crankshaft here and cylinder one, two, three, and four. And if you look on four, which was the one that was destroyed, there's quite a bit of scoring on the crankshaft. And you can definitely feel it if you run over it with your fingers. So that would. I don't know, have to be resurfaced or something of the sort to be able to use this again. Um, all the other ones are pretty damn smooth. All the main seals are looking really good too. Uh, it's really just that fourth rod that messed up the crankshaft there. So going through the rods, we have the cylinder one, which honestly was also definitely getting worn. If you look at the main bearings here, getting chewed up. So if this guy wasn't making noise, he would have been very soon. So I would definitely replace this rod. Um, our second cylinder looks pretty good. There's a nice score right there in the middle, so definitely replace the bearing. Um, the other side looks pretty clean, pretty smooth. And as well on the crankshaft, this whole thing is nice and smooth, so nothing wrong there. On cylinder three, uh, pretty decent bearing. Probably the cleanest one of them all. Um, you can definitely tell these fit snugly in here and like number one just both of them fell out right away so definitely needed replaced. And then finally the one that was most likely making most of the noise. Uh, cylinder number four completely destroyed. The bearing is even fused to the rod. so. Yeah, um, definitely replace that rod as well. You have no idea what kind of stresses uh, there were while this was wiggling around like crazy. So, so the other thing I'll show you is the piston. You can easily take the piston off of the rod by taking out the C-clamps and the wrist pin, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's about all I have, and thank you guys for watching.